The Crucible, Act Three, continued. Proctor, breathless and in agony. It is a whore. Danforth. You charge? Mr. Danforth, he is lying. Mark her. Now she'll suck a scream to stab me with, but you will prove this. This will not pass. I have known her, sir. I have known her. You, you are a letter. John, you cannot say such a... Oh, Francis, I wish you had some evil in you that you might know me. A man will not cast away his good name. You surely know that. In, in what time? In what place? In the proper place, where my beasts are bedded. On the last night of my joy, some eight months past. She used to serve me in my house, sir. A man may think God sleeps, but God sees everything. I know it now. I beg you, sir, I beg you, see her for what she is. My wife, my dear good wife, took this girl soon after, sir, and put her out on the high road. And being what she is, a lump of vanity, sir. Excellency, forgive me, forgive me. She thinks to dance with me on my wife's grave. And well, she might, for I thought of her softly. God help me, I lusted. And there is a promise in such sweat, but it is a whore's vengeance. You must see it. I set myself entirely in your hands. I know you must see it now. Danforth, blanched in horror, turning to Abigail. You deny every scrap and title of this? If I must answer that, I will leave, and I will not come back again. Danforth seems unsteady. I have made a bell of my honor. I have rung the doom of my good name. You will believe me, Mr. Danforth. My wife is innocent, except she knew a whore when she saw one. What look do you give me? I'll not have such looks. You will remain where you are. Mr. Paris, go into the court and bring good wife Proctor out. Your honor, this is all a... Bring her out and tell her not one word of what's been spoken here, and let you knock before you enter. Now we shall touch the bottom of this swamp. Your wife, you say, is an honest woman. In her life, sir, she have never lied. There are them that cannot sing and them that cannot weep. My wife cannot lie. I have paid much to learn it, sir. And when she put this girl out of your house, she put her out for a harlot? Aye, sir. And knew her for a harlot? I, sir, she knew her for a harlot. Good, then. And if she tell me, child, it were for harlotry. May God spread his mercy on you. Hold. Turn your back. Turn your back. Do likewise. Now let neither of you turn to face Goody Proctor. No one in this room is to speak one word or raise a gesture, I or nay. Enter. Mr. Cheever, report this testimony in all exactness. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Ready, sir. Come here, woman. Look at me only, not at your husband. In my eyes only. Good, sir. We are given to understand that at one time you dismissed your servant, Abigail Williams. That is true, sir. For what cause did you dismiss her? You will look in my eyes only and not at your husband. The answer is in your memory and you need no help to give it to me. Why did you dismiss Abigail Williams? She dissatisfied me and my husband. In what way dissatisfied you? She were... Woman, look at me. Were she slovenly, lazy? What disturbance did she cause? Your Honor, I, in that time, I were sick, and I, my husband is a good and righteous man. He has never drunk as some are, nor wasted his time at the shovel board, but always at his work. But in my sickness, you see, sir, I were a long time sick after my last baby, and I thought I saw my husband somewhat turning from me. And this girl, look at me. I, sir, Abigail Williams. What of Abigail Williams? I came to think he fancied her. And so one night I lost my wits, I think, and put her out on the high road. 
your husband, did he indeed turn from you? My husband is a goodly man, sir. Then he did not turn from you? He, look at me. To your own knowledge, has John Proctor ever committed the crime of lechery? Answer my question. Is your husband a lecher? No, sir. Remove her, Marshal. Elizabeth, tell the truth. She has spoken. Remove her. Elizabeth, I have confessed it. Oh, God. The door closes behind her. She only thought to save my name. Excellency, it is a natural lie to tell. I beg you, stop now before another is condemned. I may shut my conscience to it. No more. Private vengeance is working through this testimony. From the beginning, this man has struck me true. By my oath to heaven, I believe him now, and I pray you call back his wife before we... She spoke nothing of lechery, and this man has lied. I believe him. This girl has always struck me false. She has... Abigail, with a weird, wild, chilling cry, screams up to the ceiling. You will not be gone. Be gone, I say. What is it, child? But Abigail, pointing with fears, now raising up her frightened eyes, her awed face toward the ceiling. The girls are doing the same, and now Hawthorne, Hale, Putnam, Cheever, Herrick, and Danforth do the same. What's there? He lowers his eyes from the ceiling, and now he is frightened. There is real tension in his voice. Child! She is transfixed with all the girls. She is whimpering, open mouth agape at the ceiling. Girls, why do you... It's on the beam, behind the rafters. Where? Why? Why do you come, yellow bird? Where's a bird? I see no bird. My face, my face, Mr. Hale, be quiet. Do you see a bird? Be quiet. Abigail, to the ceiling in a genuine conversation with the bird, as though trying to talk it out of attacking her. But God made my face. You cannot want to tear my face. Envy is a deadly sin, Mary. Mary Warren on her feet with a spring and horrified pleading. Abby! Oh, Mary, this is a black art to change your shape. No, I cannot. I cannot stop my mouth. It's God's work. It's God's work I do. Abby! I'm here. They're pretending, Mr. Danforth. Now Abigail takes a backward step as though in fear the bird will swoop down momentarily. Oh, please, Mary, don't come down. Susanna Walcott, her claws, she's stretching her claws. Lies, lies. Mary, please don't hurt me. I'm not hurting her. Why does she see this vision? She sees nothing. Abigail, now staring full front as though hypnotized and mimicking the exact tone of Mary Warren's cry. She sees nothing. Abby, you mustn't. Abby, you mustn't. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Mary Warren, draw back your spirit out of them. Mr. Danforth. Mr. Danforth, have you compacted with the devil? Have you? Never, never, never. Never. Why can they only repeat you? Give me a whip. I'll stop it. They're sporting. They, they're sporting. Abby, stop it. Abby, stop it. Mary Warren, stop it. Girls, stop it. Mary Warren, screaming it out at the top of her lungs and raising her fists. Stop it. Girls, raising their fists. Stop it. Mary Warren, utterly confounded and becoming overwhelmed by Abigail's and the girls, utter conviction starts to whimper, hands half raised, powerless, and all the girls begin whimpering exactly as she does. A little while ago you were afflicted. Now it seems you afflict others. Where did you find this power? I have no power. I have no power. They're gulling you, mister. Why did you turn about this past two weeks? You have seen the devil, have you not? You cannot believe them. I, Mary, God damns all liars. You have seen the devil. You have made compact with Lucifer, have you not? God damns liars, Mary. Mary utters something unintelligible, staring at Abigail, who keeps watching the bird above. 
I cannot hear you. What do you say? Mary utters again, unintelligibly. You will confess yourself, or you will hang. He turns her roughly to face him. Do you know who I am? I say you will hang if you do not open with me. Mary, remember the angel, Raphael. Do that which is good and... The wings! Her wings are spreading! Mary, please! Don't! Don't! I see nothing, Your Honor. Do you confess this power? Speak! She's going to come down. She's walking the beam. Will you speak? I cannot. I cannot. Cast the devil out. Look him in the face. Trample him. We'll save you. Mary, only stand fast against him and look out. She's coming down. She and all the girls run to one wall, shielding their eyes, and now as though cornered, they let out a gigantic scream, and Mary, as though infected, opens her mouth and screams with them. Gradually, Abigail and the girls leave, until only Mary is left there, staring up at the bird, screaming madly. All watch her, horrified by this evident fit. Proctor strides to her. Mary, tell the governor what they... He has hardly got a word out when seeing him coming for her, she rushes out of his reach, screaming in horror. Don't touch me, don't touch me, at which the girls halt at the door. Mary, you're the devil's man. He is stopped in his tracks. Praise God, praise God. Mary, how? I'll not hang with you. I love God, I love God. He bid you do the devil's work. He come at me by night and every day to sign, to sign, to sign what? The devil's book. He come with a book? My name. He want my name. I'll murder you, he says. If my wife hangs, we must go and overthrow the court, he says. Danforth's head jerks towards Proctor, shock and horror in his face. Proctor turning, appealing to Hale. Mr. Hale. Mary Warren, her sobs beginning. He wake me every night, his eyes were like coals, and his fingers claw my neck, and I sign, I sign. Excellency, this child's gone wild. Proctor, as Danforth's wide eyes pour on him. Mary, Mary. No, I love God, I go your way no more. I love God, I bless God. Abby, Abby, I'll never hurt you more. What are you? You are combined with Antichrist, are you not? I have seen your power. You will not deny it. What say you, mister? Excellency, I will have nothing from you, Mr. Hale. Will you confess yourself befouled with hell, or do you keep that black allegiance yet? What say you? I say, I say, God is dead. Hear it, hear it. Ugh, a fire. A fire is burning. I hear the boot of Lucifer. I see his filthy face. And it is my face and yours, Danforth. For them that quail to bring men out of ignorance as I have quailed. And as you quail now when you know in all your black hearts that this be fraud. God damns our kind especially. And we will burn. We will burn together. Marshal, take him and Corey with him to the jail. I denounce these proceedings. You are pulling heaven down and raising up a whore. I denounce these proceedings. I quit this court. <coughs> Mr. Hale, Mr. Hale. The curtain falls.